Hey, what's going on guys? This is Broku back, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball video. And today, this is part two to what if Goku went Super Saiyan during the Saiyan Saga. Now, please do leave a like if you did enjoy. If we get 300 likes, we will get part two. So 300 likes, part two confirmed. Comment down below, subscribe if you are new and if you do like the video. And if you want to see part three, turn on the notifications because then you'll know right away when it's uploaded. Also guys, we just hit 10,000 subscribers and thank you so much for that. My 10,000 subscriber special is gonna be a Q&A. So go over to ask.fm and my name on there is Broku72. Ask me any question you want. Ask me anything about Dragon Ball or just anything about my life in general. So just feel free to ask. And again, thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. So. Before I get into the new story, there are some things that I need to address because I did have some errors in part one and there are some things that need to be explained better because a lot of people were a bit confused. So I was wrong when I said that Vegeta knew about Frieza destroying the planet. I was wrong. He did not know that until he was on Namek. So we're going to have to scratch that part, but I'm going to say that in this, he knows that Frieza's on Namek because Frieza uses the transmissions and he goes through and he hears everything that happens and Vegeta sees that, oh, somebody logged in, so, you know, Frieza must know. So it's not completely accurate, but that's what we're going to use here. Also, guys, a lot of people were mad that about Goku's power level and him not being as strong as Frieza. You guys are saying, since his power level was stronger after the gravity chamber on the ship, that he should be now much, much stronger than Frieza after he gets a Zenkai boost. But as you guys have know, Goku's power level goes from 90,000 to 3 million in canon. In this, it goes from 200,000 to about 1.8 million. So I'm giving it a much smaller Zenkai boost because he did not get beat up nearly as bad as Vegeta beat up Ginyu in Goku's body. Therefore, it makes sense. Yes, Goku naturally is supposed to be stronger than Frieza, but this is a what-if scenario where things are changed. Also, when I referred to Frieza killing a young Namekian, it wasn't Dende, as Dende was in the Elder's place because he left Vegeta in there to get his potential unlocked. He wasn't outside. Frieza, he was able to convince just a random young Namekian to make the wish. Another thing I forgot to mention is that instead of using Bulma's ship, her ship was actually destroyed, and that Goku went on a Frieza's army ship that still led him to Yard Rat to learn instant transmission. Forgot to leave that part in there. Goku, though, did not stay as long knowing that Frieza and Vegeta are on the loose. Another thing is that people keep saying that Bo Gohan or Bulma would have just went back in time already to give Goku the medicine. Keep in mind, the story takes place eight years after the android's arrival. Gohan didn't die until 13 years after their arrival, then Trunks went back in time after that. So it makes sense that they have not used time travel yet. Also, people are wished back with the Namekian Dragon Balls, not the Earth Balls. That's what I meant, but I just didn't specify in the video. Also, I forgot to mention that Piccolo fuses with Kami in this timeline. It makes him similar in power to the main timeline Piccolo when the androids arrive, so stronger than a Super Saiyan Goku on Namek, but he is not on the androids level because he never fused with Nail. So guys, another thing I forgot to mention is that when I said that Goku was torturing Vegeta or Frieza, I didn't mean to say that. I misspoke. Now I know that torturing is not in Goku's personality of fighting or style of fighting, but what I did really mean to say is that he was just, you know, beating the crap out of Vegeta and Frieza. He wasn't torturing them, just, you know, beating them in a fight and you know making them bleed giving like so they have visible bruises on their body but you know not torturing them now with most things cleared up let's begin with part two remember we ended part one with a confused vegeta arriving to a war-torn earth he is pissed off with kakarot being dead an explosion goes off and vegeta is ready to go see what has been causing trouble on earth so we get to see goku now in the other world he is training with King Kai and, you know, the other fallen Z fighters. He has basically been training non-stop for the eight years of his death so far. He's learned a lot of techniques, like the techniques he learned originally, like the fusion dance. Has gotten a lot stronger. He's achieved Super Saiyan 2, and he's even trying to get access to Super Saiyan 3. He's not there yet. But overall, you know, his base form is now just insanely strong. 
similar to what it would be at Z during the Buu Saga. In the middle of Goku sparring with Piccolo, King Kai yells to Goku that Vegeta has arrived on Earth. Goku stops training immediately and rushes to go look. He can't believe that Vegeta has finally returned, and he doesn't know what Gohan's gonna do when he has to face off against Vegeta and the androids. Goku basically begs to go back to Earth to try and help his son, but the request is not granted. Goku is mad, but he just leaves it up to his son to find a way to get past them. So Goku continues training with Piccolo. Gohan and Vegeta arrive at the city and they see two androids. Vegeta laughs. These two little brats are the ones that are causing you problems? You're such a weakling. Vegeta goes down to confront the two. Gohan is ready to be able to have two Super Saiyans to take on the androids. That is when Vegeta punches Gohan in the gut. You will not intervene, son of Kakarot. Gohan does as Vegeta pleases. Vegeta powers up to Super Saiyan, and he goes into battle against the android. So Vegeta in this instance is similar in power to Vegeta when he fought Android 18 in the main timeline. He is somewhat similar in power to them. However, these androids are much weaker than those ones. I know it's been eight years, so you're probably saying that Vegeta should be much stronger, but you will know why he isn't in just a minute. Vegeta as a Super Saiyan is somewhat holding his own against the two androids. Vegeta is overpowering them at the beginning, but over the onset of the fight, once Vegeta starts to lose his stamina, he starts to lose. He gets tired, and then Android 17 blows a hole through Vegeta's chest, and he reverted to his base form, and he falls to his death. Gohan is shocked. You idiot. We should have taken them on together. Gohan can't help but notice Vegeta's soldiers looking down at the battle with a smirk on their face. Why are you smiling? Your king just died. Now we're all dead. Then Gohan looked back at Vegeta's corpse. The hole in his chest slowly started to heal back together. Gohan felt Vegeta's key return to his body, and then Vegeta opened his eyes. He got up and he started laughing. His soldiers joined in with the laughing, and Gohan and the androids just watched in complete shock. How, how did you? Gohan mumbles, trying to find words to speak. No time, Vegeta mutters as he goes back into his Super Saiyan form. And now with Vegeta's Zenkai boost, he's now actually beating the two androids at the same time. The androids are still shocked on what just happened with Vegeta. The android, knowing they are going to lose, rush to escape. Vegeta wipes the blood off his face and smirks. Only scum runs away. I know you guys are probably thinking, what the fuck just happened? Well, so does Gohan. Vegeta, how did you do that? I am now immortal. I can't die. Gohan is shocked. A few years after the battle with Frieza, I returned to Namek to make my wish. I convinced the Namekians Frieza was about to return, so they made my wish for immortality so I could defend them. Then I made a wish for every full blood Saiyan left in the universe to be teleported to Namek. A few dozen Saiyans then were teleported to Namek. I just said I needed soldiers, and my third and final wish was to bring my father back. I then subjugated the stupid Namekians and they are now slaves to the Saiyan Empire. And I was bringing back what my father had started. My father though was stupid enough to back then align the Saiyans with Frieza, ultimately leading to our downfall. I then sent out to find my father and I found him quite quickly. He embraced me. He was actually prideful that his own son helped defeat Frieza, became a Super Saiyan, and to help rebirth the Saiyan Empire. You will of course be my right hand man, King Vegeta says to his son. About that father. You were the one that led us to the path of destruction years ago. I can't let that happen again. But since the prince can't be the king until the king falls, so be it. I killed him. Why did I wish him back? Because I wanted to kill him personally. He would much rather be dead by his own son's hand than that of Frieza's. Vegeta then says, but I have unfinished business with these two brats. And Vegeta rushes to the android. Vegeta, he can't sense their key as they don't have any, but he had sent his dozens of Saiyan scouts in the area before the fight and they had been able to pinpoint the exact location. Vegeta arrives at Jiro's lab. He blasts a hole through the door and now he sees three figures in the smoke. The smoke clears and Vegeta sees a big buff man wearing green and black. <laughs> One more of you doesn't mean you have the power to stop King Vegeta. Yes, Android 16 had been awakened by 7 and 18 as a last resort, realizing Vegeta was just a bit too much for them. Remember, 16 is much stronger than both 17 and 18, so now the three androids have the upper hand on the king. The fight starts off with Vegeta having a slight disadvantage, but over the fight, the androids begin to overpower him more and more, eventually to the point where they are just beating the shit out of Vegeta. Then. 16 does a full power punch right to the back of Vegeta's neck. This caused him to revert to his base form and fall to the ground. His key was barely there. 
King Vegeta had been paralyzed from the neck down. Gohan realizes that Vegeta is in trouble. Since he hadn't technically died, his immortality won't cause his body to heal himself. Gohan rushes in and does a, another solar flare on the android. He grabs Vegeta and rushes away from the scene. The Saiyan soldiers follow him back to the ship. Gohan hands Vegeta to a soldier and they put him in the healing tank, similar to the one that Goku was in on Namek. Gohan doesn't know what to do. He couldn't handle even a single android on his own, let alone both of them. And now there is a third one which is much stronger than the other two. That is when Gohan feels a very powerful key arrive on Earth. He looks up and sees a very mysterious spaceship fly overhead. The spaceship lands and out comes Lord Frieza. Come on out and play Goku, I've gotten much stronger over my last week of training. Frieza blows up an already ruined city to try and attract Goku's attention. But this actually catches the attention of the androids, who think it is Vegeta, so they rush to go finish him off. So I know a lot of you guys are probably like, um, why is Frieza coming here now? In the original timeline, he came in after just a year. And, well, this is eight years, so seven years after that. And the thing is that Frieza, he thinks that he is immortal. And since he is going to be living for an eternity, or else he thinks he is, he's going to naturally just take things slower because he has so much time. This is why it takes him eight years to return to Earth in order to try and kill Goku instead of one. But they get there and they see an ugly alien. Frieza mocks, geez, humans must be so weak. They don't even have a power level high enough to be detected by a scouter. 17 then blasts Frieza, which knocks him back and actually hurts him. How dare you, you puny human, Frieza says. He then transforms into his final form. With one death beam, he kills 17 immediately. 18 rushes for revenge of her brother. Frieza obliterates 18 with a simple key blast. Frieza's gotten much stronger even with just a week of training. Just like how in just four months of training, he got strong enough to fight with a god essence Goku in Dragon Ball Super. Also, I wanted to mention that in this, Frieza trains for a week and he gets a lot stronger. Now, we saw in Super he trains for four months and he literally gets millions of times stronger to billions of times stronger. It Just a week of training would make him probably even stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but we're gonna say he trains for a week, but you know, not all day, every day intense training like he did for the four months. So it's just, you know, a lighter style of training for a week, but he did get a lot stronger. Frieza is about ready to finish off Android 16, slowly, slowly killing him. When out of nowhere, a key blast to his side comes in and blows 16 to pieces. It is Vegeta. He's back from his healing and he's now more powerful than ever due to a Zenkai boost. The rematch between the evil emperor and the almost as evil Saiyan king is about to begin. We go back to the other world and Goku is training with Piccolo again on King Kai's planet. And King Kai warns Goku this time again, but now Frieza is back as well. Goku really just cannot believe what's going on right now. First, there was this whole android issue. Now there's Vegeta, who is immortal, and there's Frieza. He really wants to go help his son, and he's urging, he's urging King Kai that he needs to go help, or else Earth's gonna be destroyed and the entire galaxy or universe is gonna be conquered by either Frieza or Vegeta, or both. King Kai says he's, he would try and put in a good word for him to get back to the Earth, just, you know, his, he'd still have a halo and be dead on, on Earth, but he'd be able to join in and help them fight. That is until some mysterious figures land on King Kai's planet. It is the Supreme Kai and Kibito. Supreme Kai says, Goku, there should be no issue with you getting back to Earth. We're gonna need your help and an even bigger issue. Now, that is the end of part two, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please comment down below what you think, if I did anything wrong, and just let me know. Like if you did enjoy, subscribe if you are new, and remember, 300 likes guarantees a part three. Do not forget to turn on notifications, because if you do, then you will see part three. Hope you have an amazing day. Peace out.